Graphics card drivers. Something we often think about only when there's something wrong. But they're always there, they're always working while we're playing games, and having the newest ones is almost always a good idea. But the real question is, why? Why bother when the stuff works fine as it is? Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks we ask the question, how do new graphics drivers improve game performance? We've all heard it a million times, keep your graphics drivers updated, but it's kind of hard to understand exactly why that's important if you don't really know why we have graphics drivers. Let's talk about what a device driver actually is. Hardware like a graphics card is a very complex set of minuscule components that all do lots and lots of different things. And as chips are miniaturized and materials made that conduct electricity better, oftentimes there's actually more components on a single card every year. I think the best way to illustrate what a driver does is to ask you if your shoes tie themselves. I think you know the answer is no, shoes don't tie themselves, that's back to the future stuff, it's fiction, maybe one day, but no, you have to tie your shoes. If the shoelaces are a component of your shoes, your hands are the driver, directing the shoelaces to do the thing that they're supposed to do, resulting in the desired effect. Now, while you don't absolutely have to have a driver in order to interface with a piece of hardware, the way Windows works, it's pretty much the way you do it. Could you include native support in all of your applications for a piece of hardware? Sure. It would take you lots of extra time and it would seem like a weird thing to do in today's world when game development has so many other components that need to be taken care of and the work is already done in the form of a driver, but you could. But like I said, here in the real world, not the hypothetical one, people do not do that. They use drivers because it's work done by the company that created the hardware to allow people to write stuff that works with that hardware easier, thus incentivizing using the hardware. DirectX, OpenGL, Vulkan, etc. All of these things are APIs that allow you to access the hardware through drivers. I'm simplifying a little bit, but that's probably the best way to understand it. When you want your game to do something, you write a line of code and drivers make it so that that code is understood by the hardware and the hardware does the thing it's supposed to do. Now, updating graphics drivers isn't just an activity that manufacturers do to justify their continued existence. I mean, aside from making another graphics card later, it seems like there's not a lot for them to do. But that's not true. Now, the capabilities of a piece of hardware are often not entirely understood by every single person in the entire world after it comes out. This includes all of the people working at the company. Most people don't have time to get a microscope and investigate every single little transistor on the piece of hardware, and so they rely on information provided to them by the designers. Now, here's the thing that people need to understand. Humans are human. There are bugs in drivers, almost all drivers. And when you update your drivers, you're oftentimes adding little bug fixes here and there, closing little leaks, ending loops that return results that aren't expected, most of the time things that aren't catastrophic, but bugs themselves can affect performance. But here's the thing, they're not the only thing that can affect performance. When a game is released, a game has bugs in it. It is not perfect. It is the product, again, of human labor. Time is spent on it, sure. Things are tested, and the best efforts are often made to avoid major bugs. That said, games still have to be patched. When you have millions of people playing something, it becomes more immediately obvious where there are little bugs that throw up little errors that may affect the experience. But what else happens is as more people are playing it, the areas where the game is not optimized as much become significantly more obvious. This is not just true for software. It's also true for hardware. The more people that are using hardware, the more people understand the flaws in the hardware, or in most cases, the flaws in the software's interaction with the hardware. Hardware is pretty generally neutral about how you interact with it, so if you send it commands that it can't execute, it won't execute them. That's that. It may try to execute them and be like, nah, actually no, and that might use a little bit of electricity, or in some cases even initialize several components of the hardware, and that may use some resources. 
and that may ding the performance a little bit. Now I'm setting up these smaller scenarios to make it much easier to understand when we talk about where GPU manufacturers go after the releases of games. A common misconception about GPU manufacturers is that they don't really have a lot to do with the end user experience. They release some drivers and that's that. But they actually release drivers specifically optimized for either an engine or even some cases specific games. In fact, they're often spending time specifically on that. So what's interesting to think about, a GPU developer is most likely more acquainted with the hardware than a game developer. So if a GPU developer tests the hardware on a game and sees things that maybe could be done better, and keep in mind I'm being very, very basic in the way that I'm phrasing that, they may implement a fix via the drivers that essentially makes the hardware ignore certain parts of the the game's code and instead swaps it out for the GPU developer's driver code. This can be looked at as a positive thing because it may be that a game developer simply doesn't know how to utilize a certain feature of the hardware a certain way, but in some cases it's also taken as a slight by game developers who did something artistically and had it changed, because it may very well be that they don't care about the performance as long as something looks a certain way. Art is art, and sometimes technical knowledge can interfere with the purpose of art. These types of things are more often resolved behind closed doors or privately, though. You don't see a lot of fights in between a game dev and a GPU dev on like Twitter or something, and for good reason. The ultimate goal is consumer confidence, and that means usually collaboration between a GPU manufacturer and a game developer, which allows for drivers to be released that mesh with the game best. Unless you see a dev saying, these drivers mess up our game, our artistic vision, nine times out of 10, the graphics drivers created by the GPU manufacturer are gonna be preferred by the developers of the game themselves simply on account it usually makes the game perform better so if you've got specific drivers for a specific game whether you see that they were released and you don't auto update and you're thinking should i install this should i not the answer is yes you really really should because the only real purpose besides bug fixing that gpu driver devs have at least as far as the games industry goes is to make the games work as good as they can on their hardware because that incentivizes you to stay with that company and their hardware. They know this. They want to inspire loyalty towards their stuff. It's interesting because just through GPU development, NVIDIA's hardware works 30% better on Witcher 3 now than it did at the release. And it's not because the hardware like evolved inside people's computers. It's because different drivers came out that make sure the game utilizes is the hardware the right way. Now, bearing in mind these types of situations can result in arguments that are usually, like I said, resolved behind the scenes, it still can get pretty political. And I'm not talking Republican, Democrat political, I mean like NVIDIA, ATI political. But ultimately, the thing that you benefit from the most is keeping an eye out for those driver updates if you don't have auto update on on your graphics card drivers. Most of them have the ability to switch that on and they just keep your drivers perpetually updated and it's quite nice actually. Some people don't like that on account it does sometimes have unforeseen effects, but generally if somebody's looking out for problems in games and trying to make them interact with the graphics hardware better, you want that version of the game, that version of the interaction between the code and the hardware, because it overall just yields a better experience. I mentioned Witcher 3. What's some games that you have updated the drivers for and seen a massive boost in performance? And I know there's probably at least one. Also, if you like this video, if it helped enlighten you a little bit, click that like button. And if you're not subscribed, now would be a great time to do it. We upload brand new videos all the time. The best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. We'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.